Hey everyone, in this video I will show you how you can create a data extension using the contact builder in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. Right now I am in the overview of Salesforce Marketing Cloud and will navigate to Audience Builder and then Contact Builder. So that will bring, uh, bring us to this screen, um, which I may cover later. But right now I'm going to move right away to data extensions. And actually, in a way, this overview that we get now of existing data extensions is very similar to the one that um, uh, you have available in Email Studio, which I actually showed in a previous video. So check that out if you want some more comments on that one. Um, but if you want to create a data extension from here, let's just go to create. Right. And we get this screen and actually many of these options are exactly the same as uh, what I covered in the previous video so check that out and um, I won't go into too much detail here so right now I can just say um, subscribers data extension 2 we'll make sure that this DE is uh, sendable and testable we are not going to apply a data retention policy and we'll be giving it some attributes. Do note that um, if you check the previous video that the interface looks just slightly different. Uh, so for instance, primary key as an option was actually on the right hand side. There are these little differences between the way uh, data extensions are managed in Email Studio and uh, Contact Builder. It's not always self-evident to be honest um, and I will actually go in some differences later on that you might find useful. Um, but for now, I'm just going to continue this. Oh, this should be email address, of course. First name, last name, and why not we'll add active as a Boolean. Um, now here as well, uh, we can say if these fields are required or not. And because I made email address the primary key, which is the unique identifier of um, subscribers we're going to be adding later on, it is required and you can change that. Now for um, uh, first name and last name, it is not required by default. This is one of these subtle differences between Email Studio. When in Email Studio, when you create a data extension and you want fields that are not required, you actually have to flag something they call nullable. Uh, here it's a bit more clear, I would say, uh, because it's called required and it's unchecked by default. Uh, as for active, I, uh, I said it has to be a Boolean, which means the value can be uh, true or false and as a default value I want to have true just like I did in the previous video and once again I need to define um, a sent relationship but in this case it's already uh, defined and also note uh, here I can only take subscriber key um, as the relation which is fine because it's what you usually want and uh, let's click complete there we go it's been created so now let's quickly check out this new DE that we created. And when we go, uh, when we turn to it, uh, we get this screen on the left hand side, pretty much um, similar settings as we have in Email Studio with a few uh, key differences. So for instance, here we have some control settings that um, allow us to basically set some permissions on this data extension. So if you're an admin, or if you're maybe a technical marketer in the team that prepare, uh, prepares data for your um, mark, uh, campaign marketing uh, colleagues, this might be very useful. Uh, and on the right hand side, there's this little uh, nuances again in how uh, the information is displayed. So for instance here, when the field is of type email, it will have an ad, whereas if it's text, it will have this ABC icon, little differences. And when I go to records, uh, once again, it will be empty for now. That's it. Thank you. Hey there, it's Anthony again. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to our channel. That way, whenever we put new videos online, you'll be notified automatically. Thank you and have a great day.